Back in April, my first big race of the year was the Rotterdam Marathon. A month or so before, I had been feeling in the best shape of my life. But then I got the flu. By the time of the marathon, I felt perfectly healthy again, but I was unsure of how much of my form had survived the illness. It was also promising to be a warm spring day, so it didn't seem like a good opportunity for a personal best. I decided to start behind some pacers, running a few minutes slower than my PB, and see what would happen. After 10k I was in the zone, and the pace felt a bit slow. I decided to overtake the pacers. That was easier said than done. On the narrow roads, the runners behind the pacers were quite an effective cork in the bottle. It took me several kilometers to get past. It actually took me longer to get past the pacers than it took me, once I got a clear track, to find out if accelerating was a good idea. It wasn't. The increased pace felt like freedom in the first kilometer, but already in the second or third it became difficult to keep up. Fine, no PV today then. And so, even before half distance, I decided to consider it more as a training run than as a race. The Rotterdam Marathon brands itself as the moiste, the most beautiful. And if they mean the course, I'm not convinced. The bridge is a nice feature, but the rest of it isn't very remarkable. But in a less literal way, they have a point. The atmosphere is magnificent. Rotterdam has the best spectators ever. The locals turn out in massive numbers and switch on the famous Dutch carnival atmosphere. I'm not usually a big fan of all that, but on the side of a marathon course, it totally works. <laughs> The course is a fast one, where world-class times are run every year. But both the spectators and the local media seem to care more about the average runners. In every big marathon, there is the story about the race of the elites. But there are also thousands of little stories from everyday people. The Rotterdam Marathon is a celebration of these people and their stories. And nothing illustrates this better than the reception that the very last finisher gets. Surprisingly, even at a reduced pace, I started struggling around kilometer 35. Probably due to dehydration, but I wouldn't realize that until I drank several liters after the finish and still felt thirsty. So after running about 15 kilometers of race and 20 of training, I switched back into race mode. A 3.30 finish was comfortably in reach before I started struggling, and I wanted to keep it that way. It turned out to be close and not really comfortable, but in the end I would still make the 3 hours 30 minutes. All in all, a nice marathon time. An interesting experience, good fun, and useful training. But what I will remember most are the spectators, consisting of a handful of good friends and an endless mass of over-enthusiastic Dutch people. <laughs> Come on!